Hey guys, a little bit different kind of content for you today. Uh, today we have a simulation, a game that has been played, a, a city council game that we played with our econ club at WKU, and uh, we had a great time doing it. Uh, I want to show you a little bit about how the game is set up, just super quick, basic stuff. Uh, if you would like to hop to just see the game played, uh, there's a link down in the description of this video where you can find that. Um, you can also find in this description of the video uh, links to more information about the game. You can get the PDF that I'm uh, describing here and all of that good stuff available down in the description. Uh, there you go. All right. So diving on in, the goal of this game was to kind of show uh, students a little bit about how local government works, especially with public finance and the allocation of, you know, kind of tax resources and all that. Um, it's building on the work of Dr. Kneekirk, Mark Kneekirk of Northern Kentucky University. Fabulous fella, uh, created a really cool city council simulation based on Cincinnati's city council and, uh, you know, their experience uh, trying to provide a, a monorail and stuff like that. Really cool work that he did. Uh, we're building on that a little bit. Kind of took this idea and ran with it. His was very professionally done, very by the book simulation of the city council. Uh, this, you know, that was more towards adult learners, kind of grad student type level. This is very light, very fun. Uh, could be played with maybe even high schoolers. So secondary or early college uh, would be perfect for this. So light, fun, just letting students' personality shine, letting them kind of have a little fun, use their charisma uh, and, you know, joke around a little bit uh, while learning these important lessons. Um, so, you know, kind of not portraying anybody, but might be inspired, you know, these roles in the game are inspired by, you know, real political leaders. Basically, they're just common archetypes in politics and uh, communities. So we expect, uh, and I think we've shown that, you know, people are going to, uh, students will understand at the end of this, the different roles in a typical municipal government, uh, how the different stakeholders are going to play into those roles. So kind of the interaction of city council members, mayors, and, you know, community members, interest groups, things like this. Um, and they're going to kind of you know, hopefully be able to have basic competence of how uh, local governments function and really this kind of procedural meeting feeling, right? So uh, if you're going to run this game, uh, this PDF should have pretty much everything you need to do it. Uh, each character that you have, each player that you have is going to need uh, an activity reference guide labeled page one, a meeting agenda labeled page two, and a character bio. Uh, so ideally, this would be given out privately. Um, the way I did it, I had Manila file folders uh, that were sealed with these different characters uh, in them. And the way I decided who got what character, I had uh, descriptions of each character. I used one word description. Um, so we had a, a role that was very charismatic person, you know, this kind of glad handing politician type uh, archetype. And uh, that person, I said, okay, who, who's charismatic? And we let, you know, whoever raised their hand to be charismatic fill that role. Uh, you know, I had a, a professor role, that person, oh, who's a, who's a scholar? Who's a good researcher, you know? And that's one way to do it. You could randomly assign the roles. You could let them pick for themselves. I think it would be more fun to, uh, you know, assign them somehow to get people a little out of their comfort zone really you know, immerse themselves in these characters. Um, so uh, again, these are kind of sealed envelopes. The reason they're sealed is because each player has their own goals. They have their own private information. Um, they know things that the other players don't know. So letting them have private information is really important to the flow of the game. It's gonna make it far more immersive, way more interesting to play it like that. The way I've got this uh, written, uh, the game is for eight to 12 players. You could definitely throw more players into it if you wanted to. Um, eight is the minimum. Um, a little note in our recording, we only had seven, so I actually played the role of the mayor, which made it a little easier to kind of show the flow of the game uh, in this recording, which is great. 
So, okay, if you're if you're uh, familiar with the functioning of municipal governments, you're going to know that hey, this isn't uh, you know a, a one to one copy. This isn't a you know picture perfect visualization of exactly what happens at a city council meeting. You know, some of it is more, some of it is less, but the goal wasn't to you know perfectly capture what a city council meeting looks like from start to finish. Rather, it was to kind of mimic the, the broad strokes ideas while conveying, uh, you know, how, you know, the sausage gets made more or less, right? So uh, you're going to recognize things maybe don't look perfectly accurate. Well, it's a game, right? It's a game trying to convey these big ideas. So, you know, we set this up. It's the city of Townsburg and the big idea of the game, the whole, you know, premise is that there is a tax surplus. So last year we had a great year, got a big tax surplus. What are we going to do with it? Right? So it's kind of like that episode of The Office. If you're uh, familiar with The Office where they have a surplus of funds at the end of the year and they're trying to decide whether to spend it on chairs or a new copier. Well, in this case, we've got this tax surplus. We're trying to decide whether to spend it on a housing assistance program or on a uh, new business tax credit. Um, so got these two different perspectives. Obviously, one is kind of a traditional one side of the you know, political aisle, and then one's on the other traditional side of the political aisle. And together, uh, we've got two different perspectives that can uh, hopefully kind of show you know, the different views on what the proper role of a city government should be, what it should be doing. Um, so that's the broad premise of what is played. Obviously, I encourage you guys to have students use parliamentary uh, procedure. Oh, mayor so-and-so, council member this, uh, Mr. Mrs. Doctor, very respectful uh, through this whole thing is the goal uh, to give it more of an immersive feel. So it's, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a guide, you know, there's an agenda, but there's no script. So it should feel loose, it should feel fun. Uh, you're gonna see people laughing, people joking in this video. Uh, which is super duper cool. Uh, so again, those are the two proposals. Are we gonna provide housing assistance uh, to lower income folks or a new business tax credit? And this is the agenda. Obviously we'll have some basic call to order type stuff. Uh, the way we have it set up, again, not a perfect uh, agenda from a city council, uh, but should give us the feel. So uh, the new business, before we get to voting, uh, we're going to do kind of an outline of the issue by the mayor. We're going to have testimony from the experts, so the professor, city uh, city manager, uh, community members, and interest groups are going to get their chance to speak on the matter, and then the council members will get their chance to speak at last. Do the same thing for proposal two, and then we'll have a brief recess. Um, you know, obviously, we may not even have a re recess in a uh, actual city council meeting. Uh, very frequently they don't at all. The reason I've included this is kind of to represent in the game, you know, all the stuff that goes up leading into the city council meeting. So members of the community get to go talk to the city council members. Interest groups get to go perhaps try to use their influence to sway city council members to vote one way or the other. Um, and this is where that is represented. Okay, yeah, maybe it doesn't uh, show up perfectly, uh, but it does, you know, allow the very realistic persuasion that goes on uh, to show up somewhere in the game instead of being left out just because it wouldn't show up in an actual uh, city council meeting night, right? But this is still uh, things that happen. And then you're going to vote on proposal one and two. Uh, e either one needs a majority of the city council members to pass and then going to call it a night. Uh, so I've got here all the different uh, character bios. I'm going to just uh, skip through this real quick to say there's a mayor who's going to run things. The mayor has their own agenda so that they have uh, lots of notes on what happens when. And then after the mayor, we've got our four city council members. And each of them has uh, their own kind of background and their own positions, their own goals. 
don't want to dive into all that here. You'll kind of feel it come out in the, uh, the video that you watch, the recording. Uh, we've got our two lobbyists or our two interest groups. We've got a kind of uh, people oriented, you know, uh, looking to help the lower income folks. Uh, and on the other side, we've got a more business oriented, looking to, you know, kind of economic prosperity goals. And they're going to represent their, their uh, associated uh, folks. So, of course, we've got a professor who's going to come in and supply their unique knowledge. They've got facts that they can choose to share or not. And we've got uh, the city manager who also has some private knowledge that he can share, he or she can share or not. And we've got our three community members, which all have their different perspectives on these proposals. Again, the community members are optional, but could, you know, potentially add quite a bit to this experience. All right, so uh, without further ado, I'll just throw it in. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and watch this recording. Uh, again, all of this stuff is available uh, in the links in the description down below. So let's do it. Oh my goodness. Charismatic. Okay, you may now open your packets. All right, everyone has the same first page of their packet, so we'll start right there. Uh, Today we're going to be playing a simulation of a small town uh, city council. Uh, welcome to the city of Townsburg, a community of roughly 60,000, uh, which has grown recent years alongside the regional public university. Tonight we are city council members uh, trying to decide what to do with a $10 million tax surplus. Last year was a great year, uh, so we absolutely, town took off and we brought in more money than we spent, and now we gotta decide what to do with that money. Some of you guys are city officials, some of you guys are experts, some of you guys are advocates on behalf of an interest group. Uh, be sure to be respectful. Uh, we're gonna be led by the mayor, who will be me this fine evening. I'll be the mayor of Townsburg. And uh, when addressing each other, be sure to refer to each other formally. I am uh, mayor or uh, Mr. Mayor, a councilman, councilwoman, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the goal here is for either proposal to get at least three votes, but we all have our own agendas. You can read about your own personal agenda on your character bio page, the third page of the packet. That's where you'll see all about yourself. It'll say the role that you fill and you'll go ahead, name your character, and then use the last page of your packet to create a name tag, a little table tent name tag. <laughs> and if I could, uh, I'm, you guys know who you are now, if I could have my city council members come sit around me and my members of the community come sit in these seats in front of me, that would be just fantastic. Uh, some last name that you think is fitting of their role, 
And when you are ready, I have some Sharpies for you to make your table tip name tag. And we'll be diving on in. Has everybody read their character background and your, well, I suppose before we talk about what your position on the issues is, we should uh, briefly introduce the, the two proposals on how to spend this $10 million surplus. Proposal number one is to spend it on a housing assistance program to help lower income communities in Townsburg be able to afford their monthly rent. And proposal two is a new tax incentive or new businesses and companies coming in to the town. Go ahead and get started if that works with everybody. Just uh, go ahead and read your character background, learn a little bit about yourself, and go ahead and start becoming the character that you see described on these pages. That is you for the next however long this game lasts. All right, all business now. Let this meeting of the Townsburg City Council come to order. Councilman One. Here. Councilman One, uh, if you'll lead us in the in the pledge, Councilman Preston. Well, speak my position. Oh, wait, wait, well, if you want to look at the, if you'll turn to your agenda, Councilman Preston, you'll see that <laughs> <laughs> the first thing we'll be doing is the pledge of allegiance. So uh, let's go ahead and turn towards that flag in the back of the class, and if you'll lead us, Councilman Preston. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, thank you all honored guests for joining us at this April 20th meeting of the Townsburg City Council. Uh, today I'll go ahead and welcome our guests here. Of course, we've got all members of the city council here to represent themselves. I'd also like to, to turn a special welcome to uh, Mr. Mr. Depp. Uh, and who are you representing tonight, Mr. Depp? Uh, I am chief advocate for a Prosperous Future Campaign. All right, so we've got uh, Mr. Depp from the Prosperous Future Campaign. We've got Professor Wilson, who's come to uh, give us some expert testimony today. And uh, we've got uh, Mr. Craig, and Mr. Craig is here on behalf of whom? You already know the answer to that, but I'm chief advocate for the For the People campaign. The For the People campaign. For, for the people? For the people. All right. <laughs> well, that is great. Uh, if, if everyone's ready, we'll go ahead and proceed to new business and discussing Proposal 1. Obviously, we've got this big tax surplus, and we are trying to decide 
what to do with it tonight. So I'll go ahead and read proposal one aloud. Townsburg will allocate $10 million to create a housing assistance program, which offers monetary rent assistance to the community's lower income residents. The details of this program to be determined by the city manager in consultation with community stakeholders. All right, that is the proposal on the board, proposal number one. Uh, we'd like to start today by inviting testimony from our expert. Uh, the only expert that we have today is Professor Wilson. Uh, Professor Wilson, are you prepared to give your statements? I am, yes. All right, well, I'm going to turn the focus of this meeting on to you. All right. Um, well, now I, I'm here as a, a professor, so I seek to remain objective. Mm -hmm. However, the facts do say that uh, incentives for new businesses have shown uh, to cause spikes in the local economy. Decided to put that out there. I, I just, just a fact, and I, I might chime in later. But there, there's your first fact of the day. All right. So that's some that's some good information, uh, Professor Wilson. Uh, council members, do any of you have a question for Professor Wilson, particularly when it comes to his opinions on proposal number one, the housing program? Oh well, yeah. Uh, you've been working with economics for some time, and I've lived here all my life. Uh, we are a hard-working and thriving community. If we give uh, excess housing incentives and, and money out to people who necessarily aren't making their own wages, do you think we're going to have a less hard-working and less fruitful town? So there is some concerns from other, from other cities that, um, that subsidizing the rent um, may come with a... Uh, some, some not so good incentives. Um, for example, some renters will use the city funds to upgrade their apartments instead of fixing their own uh, financial obligations like, uh, like bills and things like that. Um, that's a concern um, from other towns, though. But again, I seek to remain objective. Understood. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from our city council members up here around me on uh, what? Our esteemed Professor Wilson has to say on either uh, this this first proposal. I would like to ask something of the professor. So, um, Professor, my ideology suggests that with this ten million dollar budget surplus, would it be a potentially viable option to put that back in the pockets of the taxpayers rather than? Housing assistance program, which you have already outlined, might um, possess some issues. By by putting it back into the just refund us. Refund tax return. Okay. Proposal number. Is that one of the proposals? That's just that's just a that's just, a just an idea. Question. Okay. Okay. Um. You know. In your humble opinion. <laughs> In my humble opinion. Well, again, I. I seek to remain objective, <laughs> but uh, could we see economic development that way? I, I believe so. Yes, I, I think if you if you put the money back, you know, just like a stimulus check, like it's called, mm -hmm. stimulus. Mm -hmm. So you know, stimulate the economy. Uh, we could potentially see some growth in the economy. Gotcha. All right, we'll go ahead and turn forward now. I think we've heard enough from Professor Wilson, unless you have anything to add. Is that all? All right, that's all Professor Wilson is choosing to share with us on that issue. We'll go ahead and uh, turn to any comments from uh, interest groups or members of the community. Anybody have anything else that they want to add on uh, this question of proposal number one, a housing program? Um, I'd like to speak, if that's all right. Oh, Mr. Depp, what do you, what do you have to contribute today? So, uh, proposal one, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice sentiment. It's, it, it gives you those kind of fuzzy feelings inside, maybe. But what we're creating here, gentlemen, is a malicious counter incentive for the members of our community. We've created so many jobs this last year, and what are we going to do with that money? We're going to use it to subsidize some people who might just want to loaf around with that money. So. 
I'm wholly against proposal number one. I think uh, the working poor around here have enough jobs to choose from, and and we're going to provide that. We're going to provide them that opportunity instead of uh, welfare. All right. Fair enough. A bold stance from Mr. <laughs> Depp. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Craig, do you have anything to add on this question? Yes, Mayor Olson, I do. And uh, I disagree with my counterpart over there. You know, I truly believe that rental assistance could change lives. You know, We're sitting here having this whole conversation of what should we do with this money? In reality, it's sitting right in front of us what, should we, what we should do with this money. You give people rental assistance, they can start to make more money, they get back up on their feet, and we have this conversation next year, these people are back up on their feet, we've already fixed part of the problem. So you can strike one off the list for next year. That's what we would do. All right. Well, I think we've heard from uh, the community. Does anyone else have anything to add? Or uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I'll be on. I'll be on to the second. The second proposal. Sounds good. All right. Any uh, comments from the council members? I will ask that you keep it brief. I know we had a problem with uh, Councilman Preston uh, running off at the mouth at the last meeting. I don't want to repeat of last time. I keep myself. All right. Andrew, do we have any, any brief comments from one of the councilmen on Proposal 1 before we move on to hearing uh, community involvement on Proposal 2? I, I would like to say something on the record. Um, I mean, my background is a low childhood um, citizen. I, I believe that each person should find their own way in this world and the handout shouldn't be given. So I would be very happy not to have any proposal one. I would urge my counterparts to think the same. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes, uh, Councilman uh, Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, I acknowledge my fellow councilmen's thoughts and um, ideas on this matter, but being of similar background um, myself, I believe that a little assistance goes a long way, especially in these communities that are often overlooked. And this proposal number one, as we've uh, outlined, is funded through um, tax surplus dollars and disproportionately um, is paid through um, higher income workers who would donate more taxes to the city. So I believe that this restructuring or refunding of funds to help um, lower income folks would be a good idea and a good use of funds. So um, while I acknowledge your thoughts, Councilman, Thorns me. Um, I'm going to have to disagree and hope everyone in the room sees my points for in support of proposal number one. All right. Uh, any comments from our other councilmen or I'll well, stand for talking. <laughs> I'll keep this one brief, unlike the last meeting. Um, my family has been here since the start of this town, just about. And uh, we have experienced time and time again that our community is capable of a great uh, uprise in, in economic capabilities. We keep, you know, furthering the amount of people in this town and the amount of productivity. New businesses are opening all the time. Arby's just down the road. Brand new business, new jobs opening up. Um, I think that if this is an investment, and that's how we should look at it, we need to reinvest this money into more business because we are at the bottom is what about to be a really big swing in economic boom. Things are going really well in our way. We need to reinvest this money. If we give up now, we're settling. And I'm not one to settle, all right? That's all I have to say. I'll speak my piece. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and move on to proposal number two. I, I don't want to uh, dilly-dally. I want us to, to roll on through the, the topics so we can get to our brief recess and then our, our vote for this evening. Uh, proposal number two, Townsburg will allocate $10 million to create a tax incentive for new businesses. 
which will subsidize businesses that start in or move to Townsburg. Uh, the details of this program uh, to be determined by our illustrious city manager at a later date. All right, uh, let's uh, go ahead and open it up. Uh, that's the basic idea. Uh, we'll go ahead and open it up to expert testimony. Uh, start with you, Professor Wilson. What wisdom do you have for us on this issue of proposal number two? I'm ready for this one. I said before that, uh, that the incentives for new businesses have shown to cause short-term spikes in the local economy. But the fact bomb is, it has not been associated with long-term economic growth. The incentives for businesses are not associated with long-term economic growth. Um, so I, I'm just going to let you all sit on that for a little bit, and I'll, I'll end my, my testimony right there. I hate to put you on the spot, Professor, but did any of the council members have a, any additional questions for our expert testimony from the professor? Well, I know that my personal experience has been the exact opposite of that. Uh, and as a young man, and, uh, and same for my father, uh, some of the local businesses here gave us our big break. It's what helped us make our living that we make today. Uh, it was from the help of legislation and local business that I am where I am. Um, now, of course, I seek to remain objective, um, <laughs> but uh, that's just uh, after running my uh, my OLS regression um, using R, um, I found that it is not associated with long-term economic growth. Um, that's just what the data says. Now, although um, it's associated with short-term spikes. Um, it doesn't tend to last. Um. All right, wise words from Professor Wilson. Um, do we have any expert testimony from our city manager on this issue, uh, proposal number two? Uh, I mean, I, I object. Uh, as I think we should like use the money for like worse issues in the coming years, save it, and keep it in the, uh, the treasury. Fair perspective from the city manager. Advocating for putting our money in a, a rainy day fund, perhaps we yeah. should just hold on to this money. Just hold on to it. Don't, don't waste it on anything silly right now. And yeah. A fair perspective from the city manager, uh, uh, Manager Harrow. All right, well, we thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Let's uh, pass it off. Any interest groups or community members have anything to say about this question? Uh, Mr. Depp? I'd like to speak uh, with all due respect to the professor. Gentlemen, we all know a little startup capital is what, we, what any business needs to get started, right? We need to grease the wheels of capitalism a little bit here, folks. We need to get things moving. We're in the middle of a boom cycle right now. That one might not last. We don't keep our businesses in the red or in the black, whatever. <laughs> in the black. We want to be in the black. So. We need to pass proposal two as soon as possible. My friend. All right. Thank you, Mr. Depp. Any questions for Mr. Depp from the councilmen before we uh, move on? Oh, all right. Uh, it seems like Mr. Craig has something to say. We'll pass it over his way. Uh, what do you have to say, Mr. Craig? Mr. Craig, Chief Advocate for the Board of People Campaign, always considered my friend here, Professor Wilson, a man of intellect. And that he is. He said it's spot on. Business taxes in this town need to be higher, not lower. For example, Mr. Thornsby, can I borrow you here? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Do as you will. I say you get $1,000. Sounds good, right? You want that? But what if that $1,000 coming out of your pocket, you know? By providing these business incentives, who are the tax burden falling on? You know? The money has to come from somewhere. Well spoken, Mr. Craig. Uh, any comments or questions from our council members for Mr. Craig? Well, if a uh, tax dollars are reinvested in business, right? You follow me? Then it comes oh, out of our pocket, <laughs> and uh, we uh, we then reap those benefits by being uh, the employees of those businesses. Wouldn't you agree? Does it come full circle? Well, uh, if if uh, if we use our tax surplus 
the reason that's in business. Mm -hmm. We are also the workers of the businesses, right? Yep. If we can make businesses more successful, then we, the employees, are also more successful. I would argue that it's the employees that make the business successful. Yeah, I think that as well. That is something to be taken into account. So you have to have a um, good uh, money standpoint for the employees to capitalize on. All right, uh, I'll open it up to uh, any comments from our distinguished uh, city council members. Uh, Councilman O'Flynn. I just had a question. Do we have any information on what the public consensus is on these issues? Well, you know, we've uh, collected surveys. You know how public surveys are uh, fairly unreliable. Uh, broadly, we can say there is support for either position. Mr. Depp, you have something to add on this? Councilman, I can assure you the public has your full support for uh, proposal two. I've done countless surveys, the public, business leaders and the community, they want this to happen soon. So in the next election, you might want to consider this proposal very carefully. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, Mr. Depp. <laughs> Boy, wow. All right. Uh, anything else from the council members on this question? Uh, yes, uh, Council Member Thornsby, yes. Um, is distinguished council member Thornsby would like to um, share the sentiment of lobbyist Craig um, across from me and say, yes, these tax dollars came from somewhere. They came from your pocket. Okay? And Business in our town is doing well at, uh, at, at our current um, juncture in this meeting, and I believe that um, further and in, uh, further incentivizing these businesses, or I guess the proposal mentions new businesses, might overheat our economy, and we might see some of those effects later down the road. And I would like to uh, duly express that government, in and of itself, is an effective. Um, businesses that may search uh, um, sanctuary in our, uh, in our town. So that would be my share of my All right, thank you, Ca uh, Councilman Thornsby. Uh, any, anything else from the council before we move on? Uh, yeah, just to reiterate, what was your position, Council Councilman Thornsby? I'm against it. Okay. I, I was just, I heard some rumors that Councilman Thornsby had an affair a few years ago. So. Mm -hmm. Councilman O'Flynn. My God, my current voting and the financial success of our town. All right, I, I think I, it's time I bring this uh, meeting back to order. This is highly, highly uh, unusual, uh, Councilman O'Flynn, <laughs> with your classic grandstanding at it again. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, I, I suppose it's time. Uh, let us let us take a brief recess. Uh, we're going to take a, a ten minute break. Uh, we'll come back uh, and get to our our voting on these proposals. Uh, uh, we'll go ahead and stop it briefly right there. Oh, brief recess. Pardon me, uh, <laughs> oh. Councilman Thorsby. Can I grab your ear for a second? <laughs> yes, I guess. I guess. I guess. I guess. I what can I do for it? What's on your mind? All right. So I understand that you've uh, had some difficulties in this latest election. Is that am I correct in that? Maybe we can come to an arrangement here. I think that you have the right mindset on this one. And we can get you. No, 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 we can get you some much needed, legitimate political support from the business community. What would you think about that, Councilman? I need more research. What would I need before I commit to something? Well, naturally, the business community favors proposal number two. 
Now, of course, this is all up to you. Well, you're integrity, <laughs> right? You're a very integrity <laughs> man. <laughs> integrity full <laughs> man. <laughs> but your constituents and the people I talk to greatly favor Proposal 2. So can I get your... Pulls oh, on this one. I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> so well, well uh, uh, potential guy. Uh, raised by uh, 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 pretty much all <laughs> so, so, uh, 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 I am I pride for my town. I'm trying to help the more city more in the best way. Actually, considering my so, uh, position in the polls. Mr. Craig. Thank you, Councilman Portsby. It's always a pleasure. And I know you'll do the right thing for this community. That wasn't a good so part, was it? No. Okay. It wasn't a good time. That was a good time. You got a lot So we got the four council and these two balls over here. He's a devious man. That guy. So if you want to try and talk about his vote for either of them. I've got them wondering. Well, man, can can we, um, I gotta talk this way. way. We can be uh, uh, I, I only have so much time in the day, Councilman. You're very important to me, so I wanted to make sure to sit down with you and get your thoughts on the matter very quickly. <laughs> Mr. Depp, I take it you're a fan of big business. I, I represent business in the community. I'm an advocate for all sorts of small businesses, big businesses, all businesses in the community. How many businesses do you own, Mr. Depp? No. <laughs> how, many, oh, uh, how much? How big of a businessman are you? Oh, uh, lobby. Wait, which which one of your businesses are, uh, are going to benefit from this, <laughs> <laughs> sir? I'm a humble worker, just like you. Okay. Most of my income comes from labor, not capital. Now, okay. Can I ask you, uh, <laughs> what's your proposal, Mr. Lobbyist? <laughs> <laughs> proposal 2. No, like, <laughs> I'm telling you, we need Proposal 2 jobs, not handout. Grease the wheels of capital. Let's go. Okay. Well, it's good to know your stance on this. Lobbyist Craig, do you have anything to do about government? Nothing that you'd like to appeal to. Councilman Dornberry, who's certain, uh, certain people know, you know. It's understood, it doesn't need to be said sometimes. You don't need my services at all, considering I'm in a voting position and have an open ear to any uh, all right. potential <laughs> lobby. So, what does your lobby have to offer? <laughs> wow. Listen, talk, man. Uh, listen. Proposal 2 is not just about us, it's about everybody. We're going to use this money to bring everybody. There's a rising tide of business that brings everybody. I support you. I need to know that I'm going to have financial support. Of course, everyone in the community will love you if you support Proposal 2. It's very simple. What's that? I can hear them. They're outside. They're, ch they're chanting, <laughs> Proposal 2! Proposal 2! All right, everybody. Uh, I think it's about time to call this meeting back to order. Think about it, council members. A big, beautiful popsicle stick factory. <laughs> we'll see about it. Uh, has everybody uh, perhaps played any uh, special ability cards that they wanted to play? Everybody's uh, made their moves in that regard. Yeah, you got to pick somebody and bless them. Can't be forced. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I believe, uh, is everybody ready? Let's go ahead and head into the vote. Yes. All right, uh, let, the, let the voting commence. Here's what I'm going to need. Uh, from each council member on each proposal, I will need an aye, a nay, or an abstention. All right? Uh, so we'll uh, work uh, from roll. Uh, council member Schmidt. Proposal, proposal number one, 
the housing assistance program. Aye. Vote is aye. Uh, council member Thornsby, proposal number one. Nay. Nay on the housing assistance program. Illustrious council member O'Flynn, proposal number one, the housing assistance program. What is your vote, sir? I say aye. Councilman Schmidt says aye. And Councilman Preston, nay. proposal number one, nay. Two ayes and two nays. The proposal fails to pass, and it dies in the city council tragically. Wait, how, can I use this card? I don't know how to use it. It's like you can. Oh, that's a, it, it's already been played. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, I didn't know. All right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Proposal two is for a uh, small business uh, tax investment. Uh, uh, again, to each council member, I will need an aye, a nay, or an abstention. Uh, Councilman Schmidt. Nay. Nay. Councilman Thornsby. Aye. Aye. Uh, Councilman Preston. Aye. And Councilman O'Flynn. Nay. Nay. <laughs> Oh, well, it, it appears as if uh, both of these proposals have failed. <laughs> both proposals have failed. So the $10 million will be added to the uh, Treasury. We will be reserving it for future years. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, uh, you know, as mayor, I'm a little disappointed that we weren't able to get any action done. Uh, I have to grandstand for just a moment and lay the blame for this inaction directly at the feet of the city council. I can only do so much in my role as mayor. Uh, I wanted some action to be done tonight, but no action uh, was resolved. I, I apologize to uh, the, the members of the community who have been failed. Uh, but. As these things go, I would like to say thank you for everyone for coming out. Uh, perhaps in the future we'll have a more uh, effective uh, uh, legislative meeting. Wow, what a day. Thank you, members of the community, for coming. Um, Professor Wilson, Mr. Craig, Mr. Depp, of course, City Manager Harrow. Uh, always a pleasure to have you here. And we will call it right there. Thank you. Uh, this adjourns our... Uh, April 20th City Council meeting. <laughs>